How can we make sure your code is working as expected? In this series of videos, we will explore the different ways you can test your code. Let's start from the most atomic approach, the unit test. A unit test is a small automated test that checks a specific part of your code, often called a unit, to ensure it behaves as expected. Think of it like me preparing this pudding for breakfast. I want to make sure all the ingredients are fresh and ready to use. If any of my ingredients aren't looking good, then I can take action to replace or fix the issue. Unit tests give you confidence that your code works correctly. They help catching bugs early before they become bigger problems. They also make your code easier to maintain. When you make changes, unit tests help ensure you don't accidentally break anything. Now that you understand how important unit tests are, let's see the following example and add a unit test. All right, here we are in this demo. That of course, since this is Swift and Tips, I'm using Swift and I'm using Xcode. This is a very simple application in iOS where we have a calculator, a simple calculator, to enter two numbers. And we can enter number two here, and we can enter a number three, okay? So, and we have four different options or operations to do to get a result, okay? So the first one is add, uh, sub subtracting, multiply, and divide. And we just press calculate to get the result. In this example, I'm just getting five because two plus three is five. Makes sense, okay? You can do the same, getting different operations and the result will be different. Now, I know uh, this is a very trivial app, but let's imagine this. The point of the unit test is ensure that the quality of the units that we are sending to production are working as expected, as I said before. So in this example, let's imagine that we want to public this application into the App Store. And maybe I'm not alone. Maybe there are a couple of other developers working with me. And if we look closely to the code, I'm not going to go really deep into the UI for now, but I will focus on one particular point here, which is the button. The button execute the calculation, okay? If we go here, we will see that depending on what was the selected operation, we will call an operation from math. And let's see, where is math? Yeah, here we have all the different operations that we are executing when we are calling the button, okay? So right now we don't care about the UI. We just care about that the unit operation that it executed is responding. And, you know, it's a trivial to explain this, right? So we are just uh, invoking the, the different operations here. But let's imagine that for some reason, someone made a typo here. And instead of adding a plus, we're adding a minus here. Now, if no one is able to get this error, we will send an application with this kind of issue. And now, if we've got two plus three, we are getting a minus one and nothing is to stop us to send this application to the App Store. We don't have a mechanism to realize that, oh, there is an issue because it's supposed to get a different result. The expectation is different. That's the point of why we want unit tests in our application. So let's add some tests for this example. Let me go here. And well, this example has already uh, some uh, test template here. It's empty, but the structure is there. If you're starting a new project and you want to add tests to your Xcode project, you just need to go to new, 
then add a new target. If you add a new target, you need to look for unit test, and this will add a test target uh, with a file ready to start testing. Okay, I'm not doing that right now, but because it's already here, but just in case you need it, well, that's the way you should do it. Now, let's explore this uh, testing file. Of course, uh, for this demo, I'm using the latest testing framework called Swift Testing, that I have a series about that. If you want to learn more about it, I will leave a link in the description. Uh, but if you can also use exit test or any other framework out there. So it's up to you which framework you want to use, but the outcome is the same. Let's see. Uh, what we want is just to make sure that the operations that we are uh, calling are uh, good, okay? So one particular thing here is that if you're using exit tests or Swift testing, you need to uh, import the project math demo in this case uh, using the testable wrapper. This will tell Swift that uh, even internal uh, methods will be executed as they were public, like this example. Uh, right now here we are not marking anything as public. There are internal by default, but with this uh, operation we are telling we are able to see inside of internal operations. Okay, just to keep that in mind. And if you want to learn more about the operators uh, or uh, access operators, sorry, yeah, you I will leave another video in the description. Okay, so. <clears throat> For this demo, we want to make sure that add operation is correctly working, okay? So let's change this name for add, okay? So we are here using this function that is executing a test. And why I know that? Because we are marking this function with test macro. A unit test is composed by three elements, the range, the act and the assert. That in simple words means the input, the operation to be tested, and the result. Okay? So for the arrange in this case, I want to bring the input. Arrange in the input. In this case, I'm just testing two elements, two inputs, A and B. A will be two and B will be three. Okay? Yeah, just the two numbers that we need for the add operation. Now, act. Act is the operation that we want to test. In this case, we want to make sure that add is properly executed and we'll get, we will get a result. There are a lot of things, uh, depending on what you want to uh, tests in your operations, if it's a closure, if it's an async operation, and so on. But the structure is the same. And I recommend you to follow this to organize your unit test in a better way that everyone will understand. That if everyone is understanding what are the input, what are the, the operations you want to test, and what is the outcome, well, you are clearly telling everyone how everything is going. Okay? And lastly, we need the assert. That again is just testing what should be the expected result in this operation. So let's recap. Arrange is, are, are the inputs, act is the operation, and assert is testing the expected result. In this case, the expected result should be five, but we will test what is exactly uh, result. And in case we don't get that, we will throw an error saying, okay, this add function should return 5, or 2 plus 3 equal to 5. Let's take a look at that. Okay, we got an issue in the test because we are getting minus 1 and the expected result should be 5. Okay. And we can expand this a little bit more here. Okay, the result is minus one. 
and we're we're expecting this. But it turns out this is great because, as you saw earlier, we uh, modify the add operation uh, to su subtract instead of adding. So here we are already getting that something is wrong in this unit. So let's see that. Let's see what's going on. And yeah, you can realize, okay, this is the issue here. And we just make this little change and we go back to this test. And now let's see what happened. Excellent. You fixed your first bug. Congratulations. Now, uh, that is the point of unit test. Now, I could go on and on testing other um, functions here, but I don't want to make this uh, video boring. But this is the structure, again, of how you should test. If you're working in a production environment, unit tests are really important because you normally you won't manually submit this to App Store. Maybe you will have a continuous integration process and one of those rules will be checking all the tests, all the unit tests in your project to make sure that everything is working as expected. And if something is wrong, unless one single test, this will stop the execution. And then the developer will have to figure out what's going on, why this test is failing. Otherwise, this will be straight to the App Store without telling you that something was wrong. And this will mean maybe a one star review, which is something really hard to undo later. I know some people could say, oh, Pete, this test is really straightforward. In fact, the project is really trivial. We need something more realistic. Okay, so I'm bringing this that still not a fully realistic project, but it's something closer to that. I'm here, have a, uh, I have a online store product. I mean, let me run in here that I am just, you know, getting a list of products and I'm selecting some products. I'm adding those products to the cart. And then if I go to the cart, I can just pay, uh, pay those items and send this information to the server, to, the, to an API. We do that. Everything is good, okay? So here, I'm, as the name is suggesting in this test, I'm fetching three products from the API. And the structure is the same. I have an arrange here. Sorry, oops, arrange. And that, I, that is uh, calling this product store. You don't have to think about it so much right now, but this is just like the... Um, responsible for getting the information about the products and storing them in memory, okay? And we are just configuring an API. We are not uh, actually calling a web API right now. We are just testing a mock implementation. What is that? Uh, that we are just faking that call. We are just waiting one, uh, one second and then returning a power example that is just uh, three elements here, okay? I'm just faking this. And why this is important? Because sometimes um, uh, if you do the uh, integration that we'll talk in the next episode, well, that will be problematic and because there are external factors in your test that could make it uh, being slower or failing if, he, if they are not configured properly. So for this one, we don't care exactly to, uh, we don't care about the communication with the API. What we just care is if we invoke this product store, we got something uh, expected like products. If we go back here, oops, sorry, what is it? Yeah, so here is the input. Here is the act we are calling face product and you can see here uh, that we do some ex uh, operations. At the end, if everything is fine, then we, we 
send the information about that. Everything is loaded and the result is this. And finally, we got the assert. If everything is as expected, we got a list of products and then we will get that the number of products should be three. But if something is different like that, we are reporting or recording an issue saying, hey, the loaded state is different from that. And we have to take a look. That's it for this episode. In the next one, we'll talk more about integration tests. If this video was useful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. That's it for me. Remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Ifan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.